Welcome back to the podcast. One, three, eight. Uh, Red Bull's first and only New Zealand surfer, Kehu Butler. What's up, brother? Joe Bolt. How are we He's doing? back. He's back. Third time. Um, bit of a change up again. We've done three different uh, places. You, you seen the you seen the difference, bro? Bit of a bit of growth going on. Yeah, bro. A little bit different. The rocks has gotten even bigger. <laughs> done a bit more damage this time, eh? Gee, what, what about what about the old um the old shoe boxes on that first one, G? Oh, <laughs> fuck! It's come a long way since that, eh? We've got a bit better. We I was looking for the better. shoe boxes this time, but now nah, you've got like lights set up, actual mics, um. You got like a little DJ set going on. We can here. hear ourselves now, G. I know, is this? but I'm um, still rocking my headphones <laughs> that I gave you. So <laughs> from that very first one, yeah, shout yeah. out. Um, what have you been up to, G? Nah, just been uh, this year we had the year off from surfing because of COVID, obviously. So uh, been uh, traveling around the country and making heaps of surf clips. So um, I dropped that Quicksilver one a couple of weeks ago. You see that one? Yep. I saw it. Yo, it was we got uh, my personal one coming out next week, actually. Yeah, it's um just straight surfing based that one, and then um we got a Red Bull series that we've been working on all year, coming out end of December, start of Jan. So, what's a series? A series is called uh, Made in Aotearoa, and it's about like surfing in New Zealand, and um but I'm the main surfer in all of it, so we just chase waves around New Zealand and Gangster. learn about the history of surfing and. Like a series, series did you say? Yeah, series. What's that going to be on YouTube? Three episode series. Yeah, Bolt, we're trying to uh, uh, make a movie premiere for it too here in the Mount, so it should be good. Was that the Astro, right? Yeah, yeah hopefully. About. We're trying to get it there, eh? Yeah. Yo, but it keeps going back to Austria and keep getting shot lists to do like uh, things to shoot again. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, but it's, it's all good. This would be the longest you've been home for ages, eh? Yeah, it feels weird, eh? Fuck, feels out of it being home all year and yeah. going through winter. I haven't had a full winter at home, eh? It was pretty shit, to be honest. Yeah, I was gonna, I was, I was saying to um, Ayla in there, I was like, this is the most I've seen you for ages. Yeah, bro, it's fucking been COVID. out of it. I'm missing the old, uh, the old Aussie and travelling and stuff yeah. a little bit now, but nah, it's been all good. It's had its perks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just give yourself a little bit of a introduction for, I guess, those of who don't know you. We've got a few different um, views nowadays than the, the first days we, <laughs> we were doing it. But, um, yeah, introduce yourself. Well, uh, my name's Q Butler. I'm from the Mount, Arataki to be specific, and um, I surf for Mahi A. So, um, yeah, I'm 20 years old, big rocks. Um, <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great day today, by the way. Yeah, it is crate day today. So we started early. It's ten thirty. Um, I'm onto the old second, and oh, I'm still on my first day. Kefu's on. Kefu's on the first. <laughs> Pull oh. your mic away a little bit, G. Pull oh. your mic just back, like so. It's like about that far. Oh, you're uh, used yeah. to knowing what that's like, eh? Shut your ass. <laughs> um, so the QS, that's what you've been doing before COVID hit. Yeah. Um, to give a bit, of, a bit of a spiel about what that is. Um and you know what what's what's coming up for it? Yeah, so the QS is like the qualifying series to get on tour. Yeah, and you have to be top ten by the end of the year to get on tour. And so tour is like the WSLA. Yeah, so the WSLA Kelly Slater tour. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's with all the top surfers. That's that. Yeah, that's the that's the pinnacle of surfing in the world, right? Yeah, that's yep. the top thirty four. But the tough thing for us is that in our one, it's against the world. Yeah. So it's like just everyone's like good as in it. Yeah. And even some of the guys on tour who want to like re qualify. Yeah. Um like through oh, they the come QS, back down. they they come back down and they do some of our events to shit. Keep their spot on tour if yeah. they don't do well on tour. So we like still verse like everyone on tour, which is pretty hectic, but good opportunity to fucking put yourself out there, right? Eh? Yeah. So how does it work? You 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 were obviously travel before COVID. Let's talk. Yeah. Um. So you're traveling very often. You're yep. barely here. So yep. how does it go? Yeah. So pretty much like you have there's like little bands. It's called like uh, QSs are rated on like the star points. So there's like yep. one thousands, three thousands, six thousands, and tens. Yeah. 
and you have to do well in the ones to get into the threes and then do well in the threes to get into the six do well in the six to get into the tens okay which, yeah so you have to get like do well get a certain ranking like to get into the tens you have to be top like 80 and tens you get more points is that right or yep. Okay. So if you win the comp, you get ten thousand points. Okay, and and that adds towards you getting to cl- qualify for yeah. top thirty four. And you like roughly need about eighteen thousand points to be kind of safe. So if you won to two top ten thousand, you're in. Yeah, but that never happens. Yeah, right. Never happens. So yeah, it's pretty hectic. Like yeah. you have to get on a plane, say like in America, then. Do that comp, you do shit, you're straight on another plane to another comp in Europe, and then you're doing that whole leg. So your sponsors pay for all this, right? Yeah, Bolt sponsors pay for this. Thank fuck. Yeah. Be written off, a. Eh? See, it's, it's, it just amazes me, like, how different, like, how the different sports work. Yeah. So, so you're, you basically have to find your own sponsors, well, not find your own, but you get your own personal sponsors, yep. and then those personal sponsors, you work out deals to, yep. to so travel in. we get, like, a travel budget, yep. and then if, I, if you go over that, it's out of your own back pocket, eh? and, Shit. like, these days, the surfing industry isn't doing too well, so heaps yeah. of the boys are, like, doing, like, hard labouring, and then, like, <laughs> picking and choosing, like, only a couple events because they just simply can't afford to go some of them yeah and right. they might be the best surfer oh i didn't realize that's how it worked yeah 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 it's pretty trippy eh? but so will there, do you reckon there could be like some hidden gems out there that just can't get the sponsoring or can't get the 100 percent. so many hidden gems you met any um oh like pretty much yep there's just heaps like they're everywhere like every town overseas has someone who's like the man but just doesn't have the backing or anything or yeah. didn't grow up with much yeah. and didn't quite crack it. Bad. So and, and then so Red Bull's obviously your main one. They would be your main one, eh? Yeah, Red Bull and Quicksilver are my main ones. Yeah, yeah. And with Quicksilver so how did the Red Bull nine. Yeah, how did the Red Bull one come about and we'll go to Quicksilver after? Oh yeah. Nah, the Red Bull one. Oh there we go. Yeah, that's better. Yo. Nah, the Red Bull one, it was um they had an eye on me for a while, but uh, when I was about 15, yeah. they um, told my old man that they were going to sponsor me and told me to go up to the Warriors, um, Mount Smart Stadium, yeah. to watch their training. And okay. we're like, sweet. Got up there, watched their training, and then like all the boys got around, and like I jumped into their trainings, like passing the ball and shit. And yeah. then um, Nick minute old Simon Mannering was the captain at the time, and he like, Told everyone to like huddle in mm. next to the waters, and then we all huddled in. And then old um, Sean Johnson was missing, and I was like, "Whoa, where's Sean?" He's like the main guy here. So and that's the guy you would look for, eh? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then, and then uh, Sean came running out of the um, changing rooms with my surfboard and like a Red Bull sticker on it. Yeah. And then like said a few words and was like, "Yo, welcome to the team. Stoked to have you a part of us." And Wait, so the Warrior, the Red Bull sponsor the Warriors? Yeah, they sponsored the Warriors. Shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, Buzz they yeah. don't anymore. Nah, but they did. Yeah, shit, that's crazy. Yeah, so that was mental, and I've been mates with like Connie and Manu since. So yeah, yeah, it's been pretty cool. So, so that's how you found out about the yeah. Red Bull sponsorship. Yeah, and then I went to Pihard. That afternoon, and we shot all afternoon. Yeah, for Red Bull, <sighs> trippy. Eh? And and so, um, because a lot of people won't know, and I don't know about like how sponsorships themselves actually work. So like, yeah, you pretty much you know you get the sponsor, they come with they approach you or whatever, and then you negotiate a deal. Is that right? Is yeah. there like incentives or what's the go? So it's like yes. money, and then so if oh, you don't de- mind talking about it. Depends on how good you are, eh? Yeah. Like how good you are and unfortunately in this day and age like especially for girls like how marketable you are yeah you would freak out on the chicks like you could be a oh, i'm just gonna be hoy. you could be a rough looking chick yeah but surf like ridiculously good yeah. and not get picked up because company just can't really use you to market you well see this is i've talked about this before bro um there's and it's i've got it from the ice project isaac john he's smart man and he said there's three like pillars bro to, to 
the marketing and to um, in, like that sort of so, that side of things, and one's um, entertaining, yep. one's educating people, and the third one is good looking. Because, yep. but like reality is, you can be as PC as you want, bro. But good looking people get more views. Yeah, that's the case. Hundred percent. Always. It's pretty sad to admit, but, but fuck, it, it, it's, it's true, just man. Is. It's true. And if you can't, if you can't, if you're not good looking, you just have to be better at the other two. Yeah, hard. Like, oh, you wouldn't want to throw bloody ugly Betty in your fucking rip curl bikini wetsuit. <laughs> well, how did you get you're signed, you're, G? Because <laughs> of my rocks. I told you, G. <laughs> it's marketable. I, your rocks hasn't been in any of the videos. <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so quick, Quicksilver. Yeah, so Quicksilver, um, Maz Quinn picked me up, did my first comp, and it was his comp in Gizzy when yeah. I was nine. Maz Quinn, is he the The owner? first guy to um, make the tour, Okay, and he was on Quicksilver back then, Yeah, and he was like our manager. Anyways, he, um, he, yeah, I couldn't even speak English at the time, and I came like second in the under 12s. And um, he, You couldn't speak English? Bro, I went to a Māori school. At Marapi and my koro only spoke Māori to me eh, at his house. Mad. So when I went to um, Maz Quinn's comp, he asked me, like, do you want to be sponsored? Yeah. Mate, back then I had the roughest haircut. <laughs> I can look like a mop, hoary ass, and I was just like, I don't know what that means. I go ask my old man, and my old man was like, you're a shit, like, getting sponsored? What do you mean? And, I was and you like, were nine? Yo, and I didn't even know what it meant. Oh my god, all bro! Kicked off since then, pretty much. I've always, we've all the boys always talk about this. Um, like we've, we are kind of so mean how you, know, you see, you, you think of a surfer, you think your average surfer, you know, they go ulti clothes, long blonde ble- bleached hair, talk talk that certain sort of way. You know what I'm talking about, eh? Yeah. That certain surfy kind of talk. Um, and then there's you, best surfer in New Zealand. You fresh fade like all the boys, <laughs> talk like a hoary bastard, <laughs> and dress like you always dress. Is that, you know, is that something that you, like, focus on? Like, well, not focus on, but just being yourself? Yeah, look, like, I mean, like, over the years, like, you learn, you, like, learn, like, things about yourself. Yeah. You know, as you grow older, you, you're constantly learning, and I just... Always knew that, like, <laughs> I ain't going to grow my hair out. I ain't going to yeah. look like that. That just ain't me. I'm always just going to be this dark brown hoary ass moldy <laughs> fucking fade all the time. And <laughs> sometimes a bloody line in my eyebrow. <laughs> oh, my shit. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, nah. It's um, pretty out of it. Like, you go overseas to comps and, like, people look at me straight away, think I'm a rugby player. Yeah. And they think I'm big. Like, I'm big in the surfing industry. Yeah, yeah. Like, Massive, yeah, yeah. But then I come around to the boy's house and I'm the smallest motherfucker there. <laughs> do you, bro, do you think you've gotten bigger since you've been home? Like, you put on some muscle? I've I've gotten a lot leaner since I've been home, eh? I feel like you've gotten, like, um, because you've always talked about how you have to stay real light and shit. Yeah. I reckon you've got a muscle here, dude. Like, yeah. From, because I was like, and I was saying, like, fuck, it's funny, like, he's back home with all the rugby boys. And now he's yeah. putting on a bit of like muscle because he's gymming and yeah, now nah, back into that surfing phase. I've trained like my body to um, because obviously when I was growing up, I needed to get bigger yeah and stronger. But then like in the last two years, I've kind of trained myself to be like cut more on fat yeah. and like but more muscle, yeah. so that I stay the same weight, but we're just like more muscle, less usable fat. weight, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Because um, I don't do any weight, say. I yeah. just do all um, plyometric body training, body okay. weight, yeah. um, short explosive movements, and a lot of, like, fast twitching, small muscle yeah, activations. We've, we've done some buzzy workouts, G. I remember take, like going to the gym with you once, and you were doing that, like, you, like, had <laughs> some band on your leg, and you were going like this and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Bro, um, I was at... um. Flex Fitness gave me, like, a free gym membership for a year. Yeah. And I, like, went in there, and a heaps of cunts were just in, like, these small-ass singlets looking at themselves like this. <laughs> and then I was just in there with my bands doing, like, <laughs> flippity shit. And, like, everyone was looking at me like, what the fuck? And I was just like, oh, fuck. 
just my job. But bro. then they see you out surfing and they're like, oh. Yeah, yeah bro. Bro, uh, that's the craziest thing. We talk about that too. I feel like I'm licking your ass, but um, <laughs> yeah, don't get your head too big, bro. I'm not bald. Yeah, not the one day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I choke. Um, like when we go out surfing, I went, oh, fuck, it's been ages since I went out with you. But last time I went out with you, I remember we like paddled out, we're out the back, and there was probably about 100, 100 people out there, probably close <laughs> to. And mm. it was, it felt like everyone just stopped and watched you, G. Like, it was just, everyone's just sitting on their board, just watching you s- catch a wave, come back out, catch a wave, come back out. Do you notice that? Um, Yeah. I mean, like, not to my own trumpet or anything, but it would be like anything, like, when you become a professional, like, people will start to look at you, so then you have to start, like, um, um, kind of worrying about, or not worrying, like, just being in mind about your personality and yeah. how you present yourself. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. but, um, your yeah, nah. brand. Yeah. Heaps of people will like watch. So I just try and surf even harder. Yeah. When people watch, cause you want to impress people all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was you never know who's up. watching. Eh? You never know. It might be a beautiful auntie on the beach. Watching <laughs> you. you know, might, oh. might, <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> Oh wait, so Did we didn't we didn't even um. Oh, what were you saying? Oh no, no you, go, you, go, you go. We didn't even mention so the the con like uh, a contract with a sponsor. Yo. So how does that work again? So it oh, goes yeah. on money and then incentives, whatever. Right. Like, it, how does the structure it, work? You actually, don't have to numbers. But. Actually, all just depends, eh? Like, yeah. if you're real good, you get like. Say well, for you, everyone's for you. different, but what you get like, like a you? You get like a salary incentives. And um, like travel budget, film budget, and like clothing budget kind of thing. So that's what it mainly is. But depending on how good you are, it's like up or down, how much you get paid, how much the incentive is. Or um, sometimes they go like, I heard that they go like high and if you're not as good as surfing, they go high incentive if you win like a crazy comp. Yeah. But then yeah, like get paid sense. fuck all. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would make like sense, a, yeah big surprise if you win because then you get heats but then like you're not contracted like on a salary because like you're so inconsistent yeah yeah no that makes sense and then return you what do you what do you do for your sponsors so like you obviously have to like because obviously i run a clothing brand and i can't give you jack shit because you can (laughs) never wear it bro i'm locked up bro if i can got a ring on it at the moment so (laughs) gee (laughs) but um yeah, so we obviously, I obviously read um, Quicksilver Clothing, Red Bull, and um, uh, you actually got some Dragon Sunnies on that fucking somehow yeah. got on your head, eh? Shout out, shout out to Dragon Oz. Yo, fucking hell. Kiff his sponsor. Yo. That's but, cool. Um, yeah, so, and like today we have the Red Bull Ignite 7s on today, so I have to go around there today and do like a lot of like controlling social media kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What does that look like for you? What? Like c- controlling social media. Okay, so you have to go to the Red Bull Ignite Sevens, which is, let's say, in New Zealand, that's probably a pretty, like, one yeah. of the more known um, Red Bull events, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you go. You have to go to that because you're a Red Bull athlete. Yeah. What do you do there? What do I do there? Well, I'm probably, like... Oh, besides Bowden Barrett and the Red Bull team, like mm. probably like the most connected to rugby out of most mm. of the athletes. So um, um, they rang me up and hit me up if I can, you know, be around the event and just be a hoary cunt and pass the ball around, <laughs> chuck a couple of high bombs up for a couple of <laughs> randoms in the stands. So, um, yeah, and that's kind of my way of like giving back to them and promoting myself yeah. to them on their social so that people see, like, oh, yeah, that's that Red Bull guy yep. wearing, like, the vet that Red Bull hat. I want that and kind of all that stuff. Yeah, that's good. Um, your best surfing experience? Oh, that's a tough one. We have a lot of good ones. Yeah. Um, Think of your best that comes to your first one that comes to your head. Might not be your absolute best, but first one. Best surfing comes to your head. experience? Uh, probably... Um, uh shit could i say like a moment i got a yep. couple way like yep. one would have to be surfing uh matsukana island when it's pumping yeah and it's just like six four barrels you and the boys out 
and it's just barrel after barrel hurting each other and you surf from dark to dark, yep. come home absolutely cooked, weathered, eyes are fucking written off. <laughs> <laughs> but um that's one. Another cool experience was um bro, my um my coach, Adam Robbo, mm. he um's been coaching Kelly Slater a little bit. Yeah. And um one day in Aussie at Crumbin Beach, he rang me up. And he's like, yo, come down for a train at Crumbin. I was like, sweet, mellow. Oh, no, Palm Beach. Went down to Palm Beach, rocked up, and we were doing, like, training shit with Kelly Slater. And then, like, next minute. You didn't know that was going to happen. Bible, G. This is actually real. I'm not making up yarns. We, like, after we trained, we went to Kelly's fucking apartments in Palm Beach. Fucking craziest high rise. Went up, and he, like, made us bricky and a smoothie and shit. And then, like... <laughs> Hung out for a little bit, had all his like world champ trophies up there. I don't oh. know if they're replicas, but fuck, it was fucking crazy. And then like afterwards, he's like, "Yeah, sweet, I'll drop you home too." And I was like, "Sweet," like jumped in his car. I was just like, "Yo, this is fucking crazy." How old were you? It was last year. Oh last my year, God. Gee. what started? It? Nah, it was last year. It was crazy. I was fucking tripping, eh? What about? Oh, and then I burst the motherfucker yeah. in Japan. You, the world's you, last you surfed year. against them, bro. But the How was that? But the cunt still beat me. Fucking <laughs> waves were so shitty. Eh? Waves were like half a foot. When I when I do a little snip snippet on this, I'm going to add that. Um, uh, your next keeper. Oh, what did Not you say? Not Kelly Slater. Here I fucking come. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly oh, Slater. Bro, that here was on I my clip. Come. I'm adding that. I'm clipping it right oh, now, and I'm putting it on the Instagram. I just want to prove myself on that. If you've seen that clip, oh, he's fucking going to show it up. <laughs> I won a trip to go, like, watch Kelly Slater at the Gold Coast Pro, so I'm not being a cocky cunt saying, like, Kelly Slater, I'm coming for you. Oh, really? It was really? like, Kelly Slater, here I come. I'm coming to watch you, like. Oh, true. Because I was only, like, 11 then. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Won oh, a free trip to like Aussie to watch Kelly him. Kelly Slater, here I come. Fuck no, I came to him and I fucking <laughs> lost. <laughs> well, how was that, though? Okay, so you got put in the same heat as Kelly Slater. E- everyone knows Kelly Slater. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's got to be your um, idol growing up, surely. Yeah, for sure. My idol never thought I'd ever, like, compete against him. And better yet, what, were you 19 when you did it? Yeah, 19. 19. But in the moment, though, like, I was just so keen to beat him. Yeah, like, of course. Even, like, after the heat, I was so pissed off that I didn't beat him. Yeah. Old cunt was lucky it was fucking small. He's like <laughs> half my weight. <laughs> Is he bullshit? Is he that small? He's like 60 kgs or something. No, he's not. Bro, I'm, not, a, he- I'm a heavyweight. Sm- smaller than my little sister, bro. I'm a heavyweight in surfing, bro. 60 kgs? 60 something kgs. I'm pretty what? sure. Something like that. Well, that's mad. I don't know he's that small. But like... You know, when you come up against your idols, it's like your mindset changes to like, fuck, I want to beat this guy. Oh, 100%. I want to fucking smash him. Yeah. Imagine what would happen if I smashed him. That's a, that's a certain type of person though, because I'm like that too, but like, it's the competitive nature you have in you. Yeah. It's like, it and goes I, from admiring to, I'm going to beat you. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to know something crack up, like fucking yeah. that same trip, it was the Worlds, we like all went out together, like me, Kelly... Medina, Michelle Barrage, oh Jeremy God. Flores, like all the tour guys were all staying at the same hotel and it was in Japan actually. So they had um the karaoke bars. I can imagine oh, yeah, your yeah. your boys who play rugby would know about the karaoke bars there. And we're all just at the karaoke bars till like four in the morning, just like singing like a fucking dying cat. <laughs> hates the girls everywhere, <laughs> hates of hates of beers. Beers were just rolling in non stop. Yeah. And it was it was unreal. It was fucking mental. It was crazy, oh. like drinking with them, mate. It was Medina. Yo, he's Medina. my favorite surfer, bro. Medina is the fucking a, man. I don't give two fucks on what other people say about him, mate. Eh? He's the um. Why do people say bad things about him? Yo, I don't know why people just rinse him because he's like. There was this one time where um this guy micro said like, um he was like, um sitting on him in a heat, yeah. and then like. Medina got interference and then like they just said some words to each other and then ever since Medina's been like written off. What? Which is ratchet. Because Medina, bro, he's the best surfer in small waves, big waves, heavy barrels, like 
air game, rail game, everything. Like he bet Kelly and John at Chopes, which is the scary as wave in Tahiti. I remember that was the first time I ever saw him. And he's like, and he's like the man, bro. Like he's like loves partying, and he's like, goofy. He's just got the yeah. He's just got the best lifestyle. Eh? Like yeah. girls are all over him. I mean, he's got a missus now, so he's living like his best life. Eh? He's the man, Gabriel Medina. Yo, you're the goat. If you're he watching, is. He you is will the never goat. watch this. But <laughs> if you were watching, <laughs> you're the man, and I love you. How do you yeah. deal with pressure, bro? Pressure. How do you deal with pressure? Yeah. Um. Everyone's different with pressure. I feel. Yeah. You know. Um. For me, how I deal with it is I um, kind of just think back to where I started and how I even got here. Yeah. Because you can get caught up in it's so much in the now when you, like. Sometimes might need to realise like, hey, fuck, I started from nothing and I got yeah. here, I can fucking do it from here. Yeah, of course, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much me, eh? But everyone works differently. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I don't know, everyone just works differently. All right, we're back. Uh compulsory piss break. Uh squeeze eleven piss break. For great day. <laughs> Cut us some slack here. All right. Uh we were at build up to a heat. Mm. Build up to a heat. I need to take a piss, G. <laughs> Bro, sometimes I need a... <laughs> sometimes I need a shit, hey. What? Have you ever been so nervous that, like, you just need a shit? Oh, to- shit? in a heat? Yeah. Oh, I thought you just Not mean now. now. I don't need a shit now. <laughs> <It's> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been okay. fucking monstrosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Now. So, you, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you? So? Yeah. yeah. Bro, I... If I like, you know how you have like your um, energy kind of stuff before you go out. Yeah. And if you don't, if you get so nervous that you need a shit, mm. like I shit it out, then I have no energy. What? Yo, out of a day. So like so whenever have, I need oh, a shit okay. before I go out so surfing. You have, you have your energy stuff. By that, do you mean like a Red Bull or something like that? Yeah, like a Red Bull or like. Like lollies or yeah um, yeah okay yeah so that's yeah. your yeah you have that and if you shit before you if I shit before I go surf. out from my heat yeah I've lost all energy wow I'm that's so crazy tired. that's weird it's weird eh so like is that a mind thing do you reckon it sounds like it's in, in your head I don't know eh some surfers get that eh if yeah. like yeah it's just weird because like then when you shit it out you just feel so tired yeah afterwards okay. I don't know if it's just me. Maybe I just take such big shits, I'm always tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, but well, okay. So <laughs> surely you build up to your heat's not just a shit. So um, I I actually like a Red Bull or a coffee before I go out for my heat. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of energy and stuff. Yeah. And I try and hold in my shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, I always do like the same warm up. Yeah. Unless I've improved on a warm up, something I like a bit more. Yeah. Um, do like a 10 minute warm up But um, about 3 heats before I'll just sit there with music And watch where the waves are breaking Like consistently The best waves Because you obviously want to be on the best waves And you want to Scan the whole lineup of the beach And see like Where's breaking the best Yeah And so I do that For like 3 minutes And then um, Yeah then I just Get in the zone Headphones on, play my music, play a bit of R and B, old school R and B, bit of old Nelly. school R and B. Give N- us a plug. Who? Nelly Furtado, Ooh. Auntie Nelly. Nelly, she's yeah. all good. Promiscuous, promiscuous. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah, a yeah. fan of that? Yeah, yeah, I lo- yeah, I like that. Promiscuous. Oh, shit, I just unplugged this thing. I oh, can you not hear. No. What's Wait. that cord? Yeah, nah. Get that cord up. Yeah. So um, yeah. That's pretty much my warm up. Then I go out yep. there and then just try and cruisy. To, yeah, cruisy, yep. have a clear mind, make sure that my board is set up, I'm set up, yep. my mind is clear and I'm ready to go so that when okay. I go out there there's nothing to worry about except for just this heat. Yeah. Do you piss when you out in the heat? Hundred percent. If I need to piss, I'll piss anywhere, bro. Yeah, nice. Piss in my weedy, piss in shorts, do a Jerry Collins on the sand. Have it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. Um what do you reckon the coolest place you've been to yet? Or, and okay, so coolest and buzziest, like most out okay. of it place you'd think where people are like, what the hell for surfing? Coolest place I've been to is probably like 
It's probably my favourite place too is um, uh, south of France and Hossegal. It's near Biarritz. Yeah. Bro, it's like so cool. Like surf's mean. Yeah. Um, the food there is unreal. Yeah. Wine, wineries there fucking out the gate. And the town is like super cool and like people, I feel like everywhere people are so interested in Kiwis. So like yeah, it was I just like so, yeah. out the gate and like surf was pumping every day I was there and they have so many options. Yeah. And, um, you know, in France, eh, at the beach, it's, um, they're all nude beaches. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a perv, dude. <laughs> Bro, it's not my fault if it's like compulsory <laughs> to go down the beach nude. Do you go nude or what? Fuck no, but I do look to my <laughs> left and right sometimes <laughs> and I see a chick and then like down the beach further there's some dude getting changed naked and it's like, <laughs> come on, mate, put the hell is saucy away. <laughs> um, and then your buzziest? Buzziest place was probably Morocco, G. Oh, yeah? Morocco has the most out-the-gate surf. Like, True. It's a, a right point break. And there's like heaps of them and it goes forever. Waves unreal. But the people there, I was pretty good when yeah. I was in Morocco because um, I looked Moroccan. So every motherfucker there was talking Moroccan to me. Oh. <laughs> like even all the kids were talking Moroccan to me. And I was like, bro, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. They see your ankle. <laughs> bro, they don't, they don't know the difference between this and yeah, like fucking true. roses and shit, bro. <laughs> it's Morocco. It's like a real like kind of like a poor country. Like yeah. it's real like scavengy. Yeah. Which is pretty yeah. ratchet. But um yeah, it was is so it like, buzzy. Is it like a um there's a real contrast? So like is what there a lot of like really nice parts of it and then slum? Because uh, when you said that I thought of a place like say like Rio uh, you've been uh Rio, Rio and yeah. Yeah, so like how apparently it's like well, I haven't been bro, there, it's like one or the other over there, bro. It it's goes ridiculous. from like nice airs, beaches, and nice places, and then like you cross a certain point, and it's just slums, and you go in there on accident, you might get killed, sort of thing. Where I went to, bro, it was just like, uh, there it was just like real poor and like yeah. fucking gross on the roads, and like people were like pulling out knives on some of the boys, like Jesus. you had to pay for parking because they just said to, or else they would like pull like a knife on you and shit. Where's this? Morocco. Oh, Morocco. Yeah, bro. Shit. I was there at the start of the year, eh? Waves were so unreal, though. It's fucking mental. Food was not too bad. But, um, yeah. Fuck. Have you. You've been overseas, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Yo. not to a lot of places. Have you been to, like, overseas. like real, like, third world country places? Nah, not really. Well, only Bali, I guess. But. Bro, when I go to third world country places, I have, like,. Not sure if many people relate, but I have these um things called Yakult. It's like for your stomach and stuff. No, Sterilizes your stomach. In the supermarkets. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I have those and cause like third world country places, bro, you eat their food and neck me, you're fucking shitting for four days. Yeah. And it's pretty buzzy how so like you take them with you. Yo, yeah, take them yeah. with me and like heaps of like other like um pills for your stomach and stuff, yeah. charcoal pills. But it's pretty buzzy like the whole traveling scene and what you have to like take for traveling. Like when I was with Red Bull in America, they were talking about um, like certain kinds of fruits, like blueberries and stuff help with jet lags and shit. What? Blueberries and bananas. Not proven or? Yo, help with jet lags. At the Red Bull HQ. Yeah, a lot of blueberries help with jet lag. Peanut oh. butter. Banana, blueberries, peanut butter, boys. Keep talking. I'm going to go my drink. Yeah, so... um. Oh shit, fuck Don't know what else to talk about but Blueberries Yeah, blueberries Well, what can I elaborate about blueberries for? Fuck What else? Oh, that's all I really took note of eh? Everything else was like real complex kind of shit But So Yeah, if you're travelling overseas Want to get over your um, jet lag real quick Just smash back the blueberry banana peanut butter smoothie That sounds hissing That's actually not bad, eh? That does sound hissing But, oh, he's onto another cr- Another bottle we're third now. Oh, I'm on my second. It's time. Ooh, second. Halfway it's through time. second, though. That That's not bad for me. Yeah, that's good. You, you've been punishing it a little bit while you've been talking, eh? Like, you haven't been noticing. 
See, I think I find that. <laughs> I easier. bet you everyone who's like viewing this is probably like noticing how I'm talking a bit yeah, sl- yeah, yeah, like yeah. fast and slow. It's sl- it's slowly getting a little bit more drowsier. Yeah, yo, yo. <laughs> um, it's it's funny how much I reckon you can sort of you you drink it when you when you're just talking. Like you just spin a yarn, you're talking, you're talking, you don't realize. Yeah. Like when I just was like, whoa, have I finished my second one? I was like. I didn't even notice because yeah. we were just talking and it just happens. Like right. You just sit there and sip and you're talking and yeah, like fuck if, it, if you know me, like I'm kind of a shy dude at the start. Yeah, but like as soon as I have like one in me, like I'll just like won't go fucking <laughs> yeah, just kind yeah, of yeah. open up anyway. Yeah, well that's that's which is the way it should be. Anyways. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like for for most of the podcasts these days, for my ones, obviously you were my first, and then mm. I don't well you were my whatever the next one was twentieth or whatever. Yeah, but the first one, you know, it was very closed, very closed book, very and I and I closed book or closed shoe box, <laughs> closed shoe, <laughs> clo- Mike's on closed shoe box, <laughs> talking like this, like this. Um, hi, hello, my name's Kehuba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 19 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but but like it's yeah, you have a couple beers because it's reality. If you have a couple beers, you sit down, and you talk, and you open up a little bit more. You know, like you, it's. The yeah. real chat comes out. Yeah. You know, the yeah. real person comes out. The real... Hard, hard. I feel like... And, like, when you're, like, a professional, you, like, reserve so much because you want yeah. to be this role model image. Yeah, yeah. That, like, but when you do But what is a role model up, image? That's that's a very good topic. Cause I mean... What, 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 you, what is, is... Is not drinking and being the perfect person a role model? Is, is I mean... Do you find that being a role model? Because in my opinion, you know, if you enjoy a drink, you enjoy a drink... And if you look at your your biggest role models, let's say someone like Dan Carter, bro, who's only just sort of opened up with social media. Fuck, does back he in rinse the day, up? Bro. I've seen some cracker videos time. of him rinsing up. Big he time. Was but now, only now. But if you think about, say, five years ago, bro, no way you'd never ever see a video of Dan Carter drinking. But it was like, okay, Dan Carter's my idol. That's the kind of person I want to be like. He's so reserved. He's so he doesn't drink that sort of stuff. He does, but no yeah. one wants to show it on stuff like social media. No, everyone's like, I need to be this perfect person because people are watching. People want to be like me. Well, reality is, none of us are perfect, bro. You know what I reckon it was? Yeah. What? You know what I reckon it is? Is like, because back then, yeah, there was no social media. Now there's social media. There's so much like critiquing going on with yeah. social media. People yeah, will just yeah. rinse you that hard. You you need to find the balance because like you can either use social media to your advantage or you can pr- keep thinking that social media is the worst thing to ever come to the world. Yeah, reality is it's going to be here no matter what. So yeah. how do you use it? Well, like you know, people are gonna people are gonna. Act like you know I'm the perfect person. I don't drink, da 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 mm. da da da. But behind the scenes, my God, yes they do. What's yep. the difference between you know jumping in front of a camera, telling these little kids, bro, it's all good to drink. Yeah, it's all good to have a few drinks with your mates. Yeah, hundred percent. It's good to it's good to get drunk. It's good to it's good to test things. It's good to experiment. It's good to yep. be that sort of person because if if you're not if you're not going to open up to in front of kids who will you know what i mean yeah that was probably the buzziest thing when i like grew up like a bit older to being legal to drink and like going like some parties overseas and seeing like all the pros just getting off their head yeah, rinsed see? so hard and you're like, it was what? such a wake up because it was like man i thought you were like an absolute ruler i thought you were so straight Nick Minnie's fucking crooked like a snake. It was fucking scoliosis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, I think of like rugby players, and I thought, you know, to be a rug- to be a really good rugby player in New Zealand, you had to not drink, da da da, this sort of stuff. You had to be real straight headed, and the reality is, bro, everyone drinks and everyone has a good time. Everyone, you know, yep. footy players probably more than anyone have a yeah. good time. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, mate, you can't say that. Lose, yeah, yeah, but like, well, there's nothing wrong with it, bro. Yeah, and it's it's social media, and it's. You know what it is actually? It's it's news and it's um, news outlets people yep. that that put a negative um, put put this negative thing on negative stigma on drinking and sportsmen drinking yep. and they go oh this person's being stupid da 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 but yep. everyone's stupid everyone everyone gets drunk and does something stupid yeah unless you don't drink and if you don't drink that's that's your choice but if yep. you do drink. Everyone, everyone does something stupid. Everyone At likes to point, muck hey. around. Yep. Of course, it's natural. It's human, bro. Yo. It's it's us 
putting a negative effect on it, putting a negative stigma on it that makes it bad. And then kids think, oh, I muck up, I mucked up, um, I drank and I got uh, did something stupid, and my life's ended, my career's ended. No, it's not. Yeah. Now, you did something stupid. Everyone does something stupid now and again. Everyone drinks. You know, I reckon it's normalising that sort of stuff. Yeah. Even like... Um, yeah, here's, here's those little tangents we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But normalising stuff like vulnerability, bro. Mm. Vulnerability. Yeah. Being able to, you know, cry. Mm. It's all right for a, it's all right for a male to cry. It's yeah. all right to feel sad and cry. Bro, you know what I've just started saying, Heath? What? Bro, I never used to say I love you to anyone, not even my family, G. And yeah. now I've started to say it, like, even to my mates. And, like, you just feel better about yourself. 100%. And, like, I fully reckon, like, I've had, like, family mates who have been through depression and, like, being vulnerable is, like, the, like, you're more manly than not saying anything. Well, how hard is it to talk to someone, to talk to one of your boys about your feelings? How yeah. hard is that? It is, I reckon it's, like, super hard, but then afterwards it's, like, so worth it because, like, your boys are your boys. They're there yeah. for you through, like, 100%. thick and thin. Yeah. So then, like, when you say it, it's, like, so mellow, you could almost elaborate even more. Exactly, it's 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 changing that old school mentality where we have to be these tough males that don't cry and. You know what I reckon that comes from, bro? What I reckon it comes from well, us Polynesians. You know how we've been like rated the worst. Yeah, I reckon it's because of back in the day we we're just such hard cunts that like we weren't allowed to show anything. Yeah, we definitely. were just. We were so solid and hard no that we weren't allowed to show anything. And that's probably why we have the, like, worst, like, suicidal death rates under depression and all yeah, that well kind exactly. of stuff. Did you see that Keith Quinn, the commentator, the thing he posted on Twitter and TJ replied to it and things like that? And he was like, um, what, am, what am I seeing these days? Like, I turn the TV on, Argentinian team, and the coaches are bawling their eyes on TV, da-da-da, these people crying, these boys crying. Grow up, blokes of today. Or he's like, man up, blokes of today, or something like that. And TJ replied and was like, have you Hidden seen the, Yeah, have you seen the um, suicide rates in New Zealand? Things like this, um, you know, are at detriment to that. Take it down, mate. Yeah, respect to that, TJ, fuck. He's a big yeah. he's a big advocate of this stuff, bro. He's like time. he's straight up one of my idols. Yeah, he's the man, no doubt. As a bro. person, not even as a rugby player, bro. As Yo. a person, he is such a good man, bro. Like, I admire his um his way the way he presents himself mm. on social media and on and off the field. Like yeah. he seems like, from my point of view, he seems like such a good family man. Yeah, and um, like just a genuine good cunt and. Then on the field, when it comes to mahi, he's working hard as yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, Which is a real good balance that I want to have. Like, but yeah, elaborating on that um kind of mental suicide kind of stuff, I fully reckon it's sweet as to like, um, open up about being like if you're like even if it's little things, like little things like fuck, I'm like so overworked and just like if you need to talk about it, you just need to talk about it. Eh? Anyone that's that's discovered this massive um, secret of talking about it fixes things, knows what we're talking about when you say it. It's, yeah. it's just, just having a yarn, bro. It's just talking to someone and being Yo. like, bro, I'm not feeling that great, eh? Yo. It makes uh, things a whole lot better. Actually does, eh? Even just letting it out to someone. Yeah. Just just talking about it. Even if they don't say anything. attention. Yeah. I know what you mean, man. Yo. All right. <laughs> Places you want to go in the world Places I want to go Bro, you know what I really want to do Yeah I really want to go to Germany And do Oktoberfest <laughs> Bro That was That sounded hissing I listened to um, um, Kalen Ponger's and Connor Watson's 257 podcast And it yeah. sounded hissing And heaps of um, Do you know Ricardo Christie, the surfer From Gizzy yep. And Billy Stearman from yep. Raglan they did it when they were young and said it was hissing and that like that whole Europe trip was unreal. Bro, I flattered this is so random, but I flattered with Ricardo Christie's sister. Yeah, I remember you telling oh, me. Oh yeah. And I would just walked home I would like came home one day and I like, walked into my apartment and I walked in and he was just sitting on the couch and I didn't know that she was his sister. Mm. And he's like, Oh hey bro, Ricardo and I was like 
Oh, no, he said Richard. Richard. That he sounds Richard. so funny calling him Richard. Eh? And uh, his sister, his his sister had mentioned Richard before, and I was like, oh, yeah, Richard. I, I, but I didn't put two and two together, and it was yep. Ricardo. <laughs> Old big Rick. He's yeah, a good kind Yeah, he seemed like a really good fella. Hard. But fuck, what were we talking about again? Place you want to go. Oh, yo, yeah. So, like, Germany for Oktoberfest. Yeah. I'd like to go to, like, um, I'd like to go mainly on, like, I've done so much travelling in my life and I've done so much surf trips, like, yeah. can never get enough of it. But, like, other things besides surfing, I'd like to go to, like, New York and, like, just go with the boys, go places with the boys and, mm. like, Enjoy and like enjoy like other things other than just surfing all the time. Hundred percent, I like, understand that. It would be unreal to go like to like New York and check out like fashion and shit, mm. and then like go to I don't know, go to Europe and enjoy like the food and the the wines. Yeah. Like, I always wanted to go wine tasting. Yeah. We spoke about this earlier. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. should go wine tasting here, but like doing all that stuff and enjoying enjoying finer things in life. Yeah. And, I agree. Like, pretty much just living it up, eh? Yeah. But that that's a, takes a certain person, I think. Like, a lot of people are content doing, you know, just what they mm. normally do. But um, mm-hmm. I, I, know f- I know for a fact that I'm similar to you in that way where I, I, I admire stuff like that and I want to do stuff like that. I want to, yep. you know, think out of the box and do random things and enjoy that sort of stuff and yep. different sort of aspects of life. Like, bro, imagine, like, going, like, Skydiving like over Barcelona or something like yeah. cool shit like that would be unreal or like hold up. The bros got the lawnmower going ham shit. over the fucking road. I'm eh? gonna close that garage door. Outside of surfing interests, you s- cut hair. Obviously, that's one. It's got to be one. Bro, cut I my hair and then I stopped coming to you because you never turned <laughs> up. <laughs> but okay, I'm gonna say that quickly before you just start. This guy got me to come round to his to his house to to get my hair cut, and I got round there, drove there, took me half an hour to get there, and I was in Raglan. <laughs> and I pulled into his house, and no cars, knocked on the door, walked inside, no one there, and I got calling him like, "Gee, where are you? I'm get where's where are you? I'm here to get my hair cut." Doesn't reply, and then like three hours later that night at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock, he was like, "Bro, st- sorry, dude, I got stuck in Hamilton." I was like bullshit I was in Raglan G You're a prick <laughs> You're a prick You could have just said you I just was in Royal Pookie G Knock the service So shout later. out to Asa Because I go to Asa To cut, get my hair cut Because <laughs> he turns up <laughs> Shout out Asa Oh gee I need to hit the bro Asa up here I need a haircut bro. Yeah no, nah, He's just around the corner from me too Yo Okay anyway But yeah no, nah, Interest bro I like a lot of things eh Yeah I like um I like barbering. I just like, I don't know, the social kind yeah. of thing about it and like cutting hair and like catching up. Yeah. Um, and like, I like cutting kids hair because like if oh, you yeah. do a good cut and like you just see them super happy all the time, yeah, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, cutting hair. Um, oh, I love touch. I yeah. love touch and like footy and obviously I always follow all the footy, like mm. rugby and league and all that. It's fucking mean. Yeah, back at that hard, but I think that's just because I live in New Zealand and yeah. we live and breathe it. So um, we do, yeah, eh? Nah, yo, live and breathe, bro. It's not a bad thing. I'm yeah, fucking back it. Well, we do. It's I've hard. met some fucking pretty famous people I never thought I'd meet yeah. in the rugby industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. But um, you had a few yarns to Bodie, obviously. Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, the bro Bodie. Um, fuck Sean Johnson, bro. But the best was Connie G or Conrad Hurrell. Talk about this story shit. Ever since the um, Fuck it I'm gonna spill it Ever since the um, When I got sponsored And we were hanging out With the Warriors bro Like Connie like When he moved to the Titans Yeah I was over in the Goldie At the same time Like 17 Like He like Took me out for like Lunch and shit And then like Got me in the pokies And gave me like Money to slap at the pokies <laughs> It's so fucking so mean I was just like Such a ruler Just going like Whoa Like <laughs> Okay First like, time yeah, bro, and he was like, just press that button, and I was like, doots, 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 oh, that's 200 bucks gone, whoa, and he's like, yeah, another 200, I was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> but he was a man, like, took me out for lunch, like, every, like, three days, and yeah. then, like, took me to his trainings and everything, and he was such a good cunt, bro, 
He's a man. Bro, he's a crack of cunt. The cunt fucking downtrailed me, like... <laughs> What's <laughs> he doing now? He's in England, G. Oh, yeah. Playing over there. Yeah, he's in England. Fuck, the cunt's still the same, mate. He's yeah. so funny. He cunt's yeah. still downtrailing cunts. He downtrailed <laughs> me, G. I was fucking tripping. Um, your future after surfing. Future after surfing. Um... Oh, hold on. What was that one before we were talking about? Your interest Other interests outside. Yeah. You oh, yeah. Those. I've got more, G. I've got <laughs> okay. more interests. Like, yeah. I'm real into, like, like photography and kind of that kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call it? What's, what's the difference outlet? between... Yeah, creative outlet. Yeah. I was about to say, like, introvert, extrovert, but I don't know the difference. No, I don't either. Which one is, but yeah. that kind of stuff and kind of art in a way yeah. and yeah. photography. Like, I like taking... Photos of like in the moment stuff like yeah. when you hang out with people mm. and like pulling out like a film camera and taking photos of like everyone enjoying the moment. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like photography. At a smaller scale, you've always been like that. Like you always, Snapchat stories, bro. My yep. God, we'll be sitting there having a good time, whatever it is. And yep. you guarantee he will pull out his phone and take a story for a Snapchat. Yeah, bro. I just want to capture wanna, moments. I just want to be like. I just want to be that, like, 70-year-old cunt, look back on all his old storage and be like, fuck, I lived a good life. Yeah, I could happily yeah. die tomorrow yeah, if yeah, I was going to yeah, die, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, like, oh, remember cool. everything. Yeah. No, I agree. But, um, yeah, that and a bit of, like, I love using, um, do you have that app Creative Cloud? Yeah. Bro, oh, all the Adobe stuff. All the Adobe stuff. Yeah. so mean, like, playing around with all that shit, too. Like You got me onto pro. that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And you told me to do that um that student thing. Remember that? The student ID, run the student ID. Run that run that okay, little 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 tip, little tip. You ju- jump on the student um student account for the creative cloud, you get all the Adobe like Photoshop, Illustrator, um well, like Premiere Pro. Twenty bucks, fifteen bucks, twenty five twenty five a month. Twenty five a month. Compared to like a hundred. And you just got to say you're a student. <laughs> so I pay 25 bucks a month because I'm a student at school. Yo. But no, nah, I'm real into all that stuff. And like, I don't know, just heaps of like real like stuff that you do yeah. on your own. And, and yeah, all that's that. cool. Because I like, I like expressing myself like the, like on my own and stuff. Yeah, like no, I've I never like, really yeah, been yeah. in team sports and stuff. Like yeah, I surf. Yeah, yeah. It's an individual kind of thing. So I like doing all that kind of stuff. That's cool. So what do you think your future is after surfing? Future after surfing, I've got like a few plans, eh? Yeah. Depending on how well I do, if I make heaps of money, I'd love to make like a high performance center here in the Mount Mm. where we have like, I don't know, like five coaches, like, uh, um, this is for surfing, Mm. five coaches, like four big like cinema rooms with TVs so you can like critique your surfing after a surf session yeah. and then like a skate park, indoor skate park with foam pits to practice your turns and ears yeah. and like foam pits and everything, yeah. trampolines, parkour centre, physio room, board room with heaps of different a boards. Ma- do you find a massive um, link between surfing and skating? Kind of, <laughs> but not really. Yeah. I feel like. I don't know. I feel like people who say that surfing's so similar to skating, it's fucking not. Yeah. <laughs> You're riding such different equipment and yeah. like the same like skating, it's the same kind of same ramp there every time. Surfing Wait, you're constantly yeah. adapting on the fly. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't reckon eh. Okay, so so you got high performance centre, what else you That's think one. thought of after surfing? Um another one would be to run like a my own kind of culture kings here, obviously because I love like barbering and like clothes and fashion and all yeah. that stuff. Be mean to have like a big shop here. Mm. That would be unreal. Eh? Yeah, hundred like, percent. Every one of those here would get so many people. Like the mount's getting so busy. Yeah. Or, Good idea. or um, I was thinking like a coffee shop as well. Like opening up like a little We're coffee joint. About Yo, <laughs> We're talking about this little like a surfy kind of coffee joint and yeah. like. A place where like people can just like hang out, like both the surfing industry and the rugby industry kind of boys. Yeah. Get everyone on the caramel lattes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the caramel latte man. I've gone off the mat. Yeah, nah, you've you've evolved. 
You've evolved. I'm still on the camel. Right? No, you're still there. That was you got me on them, which was how funny is it? I like told you, and then like a couple of weeks later, I see your story, and like fucking like ten other rugby boys are on the All same the boys program. Are on caramel latte. Oh, yeah. that's like still today. Like I go like tell people about a caramel latte, and they just change to a caramel latte <laughs> straight away. <laughs> but then they eventually evolve to like a long black or something. Oh, long black. I've I've. Got when I did the keto for like a month, I was on the long blacks with cream. Is it all good with cream? It's actually not bad. Like, but when you go back to like a flat white, you're like, oh. Enjoyable way. Oh something a bit more enjoyable. Yeah. Fuck. We had a fucking, oh, I didn't have it, but this morning we had um, a nitro, yeah. nitro coffee shop. Yeah. Fucking Ground God. Zero. Yo. Shout out. That's my boys at Ground Zero. Ground Zero. Um, We got a bit of a, it's nitro coffee shot so it's coffee pressed through nitrogen yeah and it's cold but it's like a a bowl worth of coffee so like it's <laughs> like equivalent to like six coffees it's into like this one little shot and that sh- and a shot glass like that so if you go to ground zero hq um on hull road uh 138 you, you go there the boys will hook you up with a uh nitro coffee shot so like And it feels like six coffees <laughs> Like you just had six coffees in one go I, just Bro, went, I didn't even like l- <laughs> I didn't even have one And I looked at you And your pupils opened right up <laughs> Bro It was like a drug dude Bro, like, I was trippy. just like smashed it Didn't taste that nice It tasted alright yeah. But it didn't taste that bad So kind of tasted like a real shot In a way <laughs> Real? Yeah Like, like alcoholic an, shot? Oh yeah ish But not like It, it tasted like a Um Tasted like a shot, like where it would be alcohol and you're like that, but like a coffee taste. Yeah. So like you're like, oh, that's really strong coffee taste, yeah. and then boom, six coffees in your body. That's yeah. what it felt like. Okay. Oh. So this morning, uh, me and my mate Manessa, we went for a swim, and this can't said he wasn't coming because his baby was crying all night. <laughs> <laughs> and then we like finish our fucking swim, had a coffee, and then he's like, "Bro, I'll take you to Ground Zero, best coffees," which is, yeah. Best coffee, so I must agree. It's pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Pretty smooth. We went to Ground Zero. The bro orders us, like, two caramel lattes. And then, um, what's the bro who works there? Can't remember his name. We had it before. Nah, I forgot his name. Anyways, we um, went there, and he was like, yo, like, try this new nitrogen coffee shop. We were like, fuck it, let's do it. Carlos was that tired. He's fucking had, like, an hour sleep last night because his (laughs) baby was whinging all night. (laughs) So Carlos looked like a fucking zombie this morning <laughs> and then he had that nitrogen shot. I've actually got the video. I'll send it to you. Oh, did you? Chuck it on here. Oh, yeah. Sure. And he fucking instantly, within like two seconds, looked like he was on crack He was <laughs> fucking so energetic. Bro, it was crazy, G. It was about 30 seconds, I reckon, and I was like, bang. It just hit me and I was like, Oh, you were doing hell. like... You were doing like girls poo hunters like left, right and centre for the next <laughs> hour, eh? I swear. What's your what's your next moves? Um, next moves? In term, yeah, in terms of your surfing, your career. What, what's it, what's the next move? Well, back um, to Aussie, yeah. Yeah, back to Aussie. So it's December now, eh? Yeah. End of next month, hopefully move back to Aussie. And then um, we to just... To the Goldie. Yeah, to the Goldie. It's like the perfect place for a surfer if you want to crack it, eh? Yeah. So, um... I'll move back there, and then we just got sent out our schedule for next year for the comps, so I'll go there, speak to my manager, and um, we'll plan out the whole year and start trainings um, and boards and just dialing and everything so that when comps start, which is hopefully soon, mm. it'll be all go pretty yeah. much. Eh? So you pick your comps, eh? Yeah, because there's no point doing all those, like I was saying, those 1,000 events so like yeah. If you win that comp You only get 1,000 points yeah, You may yeah. as well just do the 10s If yeah, you can get yeah, into them Yeah 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 Of course yeah So can you get points for like If you're in the 10s And you don't win Yeah, oh, yeah. So it goes like 10,000 points for like winning Then Like 7,500 for second Then like 6,000 for third Equal yeah, third okay. So on down yeah, down Yeah 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 So yeah, and actually this year us Kiwis had a real good start to the year, eh? Yeah. Um, not sure if you know, but uh, uh, Billy Stem and Elliot Pineatari, we're all like top seventy. I think Elliot's like seventy or something or sixty. Billy's like sixty as well, and I'm like 
um, 40 something or 50 on the dot. So we all like had a hissing year at the start of the year. Yeah, hey, what? Yo. So you're almost there. Yo, but it's just the start of the year. Yeah, right. It was um, March, eh, when COVID happened and yep. everything caked, caked out. So how does that, what does that look like for you? Like, does it just it's cancel good, out a year, basically? They uh, carry over the same seating yep. as last year for the new coming year. Okay, so you're still on a, an yep. up. Yeah, okay. Still on an up. Yeah. Thank fuck. I was yeah. fucking so pissed off when COVID happened. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would be. I would be too. <laughs> it was fuck. Like, imagine being like, not saying I was going to qualify, but like, imagine like, if you could have qualified and then like, for the rest of your time surfing, you like, didn't even get anything yeah. close. It's tough. Not but saying that touch wood. Yeah, 100%. And, <laughs> you know, new year, new you, same you actually. New year, same you. But same stronger, drive, but older, Drake's bigger. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Um, where can people find you, bro? People find me. People can find me on Instagram, um, Q underscore Butler. Find me on there. What about just Kihu Butler? Why what? the underscore? I don't know, gee. Because I got know. hacked or what? <laughs> 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 fucking asshole. So <laughs> let me just fucking just break the news. So... I had my account, my old account, Instagram account, had like, bro, I was verified. I know. You on that. Blue tick. I remember you were like the first person to ask me, how do you get verified? Can't yeah, fucking I can't tell like, us a secret. What? I randomly got verified and I just hit 10K. Then when I was in Bali, some motherfucker hacked my account. And so, um, and he changed like everything. But then that made me link into his account oh, for like an yeah. hour. So I chucked you up. Know who a, it is? No, nah, nah. some Arab fellow. And I chucked up a bunch of random photos, like photos of dicks and everything. <laughs> of course that's what you Just do. to rinse him so hard for rinsing me. And, and you were on over 10K followers? Yeah. And <sighs> then, yeah, and then he um blocked me and then I couldn't, like, find, because I made a new account to try and see who yeah. he was. And then he had changed my account to, like, a different weird username. Yeah. And now it's, like, got a blue tick button. Gone nowhere. No posts or anything. It's just ratchet. He must so. be like, waste my time. Like, wh- why would you do that to someone? Bro, like that? I don't know, eh? But at the time, I was that pissed off because I was in Bali with my bro Billy. Yeah. And that was my main pickup line. Was like, yo, Bill, tell him that, like, I'm, I'm famous. I've got the blue ticket <laughs> shit. Oh my and God. then I'd just sit there and be like, nah, fuck. Nah, <laughs> don't, don't even do this to me, bro. This is so embarrassing. Next minute, I'll whop out my phone. And then I'll be like, oh, yeah, so where are you from? Put your hand on me, boy. Don't get excited. Okay, last question. Day three of a bender. Day three, you look to your left and your right. Who's still there? Day three of the of a bender. Yep. Oh, that's a good question. Who's still there? Ooh, day three of a bender. Fuck, that's a tough one, eh? I was gonna say you, eh? But you're like a dad now. Fuck you! You got responsibilities. You got responsibilities, <laughs> G. <laughs> okay, give me your. Check out my phone, so I can. I just wanna. Oh no, I've got it here. Oh, I just wanna God. see who I've got. Day three of a bender. Yeah, so probably you rocking. You rocking. You're into that third day, and there's two people there on your left and right. They're bringing the energy. Um, I don't know if they're bringing the energy, but. I feel like the uh, the alcoholic Kalani would be there. <laughs> He'll be there struggling, but I'm here. I'm here. The bro Kalani. Do you know the bro um, Ahi? Do you know nah. Nah. Old, um, oh. Anyways, okay. that fella, Ahi. he's fucking my cousin from Mortiti. I actually met him through Kalani, eh? Didn't know he oh, was yeah. my cousin. That's a Pretty standard mouldy line. And, and he fucking, like, at the... At Kalani's would like still be drinking while everyone's fucking drinking, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah, okay, okay. Ahi Kalani. Ahi Kalani and like fuck, I don't have any like hearty sinkers, eh? Yeah, like, me. Nah, no, me. I'll be there. Third day. Okay. Oh, Carlos. I'll for you. Carlos. When baby boy's like eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he's eighteen, Bali or what? Yeah, bowl. Bro, that's gonna Uncle be silly. Ty's gotta say in Bali. Next year though, Bali though. Uh, if, if those quarantines and all that. Cut out. Yo, so my 21st is next year and we're going to have it in Bali and um, everyone who's watching, if you see us in Bali, fucking book your tickets and come send it with us. Eh? Say less. Yo. Bali, baby. 
2021. Yeah. Hopefully a little bit better than 2020. Yeah, fuck. Well, 2020 is not too bad, eh? Pretty buzzy, though. It was buzzy, but as much as people wrote it off, fuck, it's not bad. Yeah, well, for us, I guess it wasn't bad. But, yeah, know, true. Worldwide, actually, sorry, it's yeah. probably not too good. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> anyway, thanks for jumping on, brother. Yeah, Bolt. Uh, great day. Let's go uh, send some purse and we'll turn up to the Ignite 7 so you can finish your stuff over there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time's clicked on a bit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mean, brother. Thanks yeah, for jumping Bolt. on, Jake. Thanks, thanks, Kazi. Thank you.